Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series where we bring you bite-sized ISO videos. In this series, we'll talk about the updates to the ISO 27001 framework issued in the 2022 update. We'll cover all of the Annex A controls, both the new controls as well as the existing ones to make sure that you have everything you need to implement them effectively in your organization. In this video, we'll discuss secure configuration, threat, and vulnerability management. The first control is one I want to spend some time on. This is one of the new controls that I think is going to have some of the biggest implications for organizations' programs. It's 5.7 Threat Intelligence. Now this control is, again, new to the standard, so you may or may not be doing things already that can lend itself to the operational effectiveness of this control. The control language states information relating to information security threats should be collected and analyzed to produce threat intelligence. Now, the idea behind this is that you are taking time to understand your specific industry and the landscape of threats for you, and you're actually sourcing threat intelligence, threat data, from reputable sources that can truly inform you on threats that may be out there. So this is more than just qualified individuals within the organization. You have to show that you are actually consulting external authoritative sources to understand your threat landscape. Once you identify those sources, you also need to show that you are collecting that data and organizing it in a way that's useful to you. So making sure that that data is not only collected but analyzed is typically going to be something that's more in depth than what you may be doing today. A lot of companies may have uh, subscriptions or RSS feeds or even contracts with companies who are letting them know about threats. However, sitting down discussing those threats and deciding how they may impact your ISMS is something that's not typically happening today from my perspective. So if you find yourself in that situation, really sit down and look at the implementation guidance for threat intelligence. The last thing I'll say about this one is make sure that you are not only collecting and analyzing the information, but that you're actioning that information and you're, you're retaining evidence of that actioning. So make sure that when you do things about threat intelligence, when you react to threat intelligence, that you're tracking that in some way to be able to present to stakeholders such as clients, prospects, external parties that may be interested, uh, or an auditor. So spend some time reading about threat intelligence. It's a really big control, and I think it's going to be one of the most impactful to the actual security posture of organizations. So very excited for that control. The next control is 8.8, .8, Management of Technical Vulnerabilities. Uh, this is not a new control. You should be very used to this one at this point uh, if, you've, if you've been previously certified. It says information about technical vulnerabilities of information systems in use should be obtained. The organization's exposure to such vulner vulnerabilities should be evaluated and appropriate measures should be taken. You should be collecting information about the vulnerabilities across your ecosystem of assets ensuring you understand that information and making sure that it is evaluated and actioned appropriately, typically in the form of remediation through patching. Now, if you have legacy systems that cannot be patched, that need to be maintained for business reasons, make sure you have proper risk acceptances documented for those. The next control is 8.9, configuration management. This is another new control. This is just like threat intelligence, to me, one of the most impactful that has been added to the standard. It says configurations, including security configurations of hardware, software, services, and networks should be established, documented, implemented, monitored, and reviewed. This is a very big control because ISO is explicitly stating that you should have baseline security templates for any type of configuration that's taking place within your ISMS. This could be laptops, this could be infrastructure, this could be networks. This could be external systems, such as newly acquired vendor systems that need uh, configurations or password updates, things like that. Whatever it is, you need to sit down and document the ecosystem or sort of the landscape of configuration within your ISMS, and I would encourage you within your organization as a whole, and ensure that you have appropriate baseline templates as well as processes to ensure that those baselines are adhered to in practice. So spend a lot of time on this control. It's going to be worth it to your organization. This is one of those things that can really truly keep the bad guys out. The next control is 8.19, installation of software on operational systems. The control says procedures and measures should be implemented to securely manage software installation and operational systems. Essentially, you want to make sure that anytime someone's installing software, it's done by authorized individuals, 
and that you're considering the risk of that, whether it be from the source of the software, the way the software is installed, who installs it, what accounts you use to install it, all of those things should be considered and documented in an agreed upon procedure within your organization. The last control for this category is use of cryptography. This control combines the policy on the use of cryptographic controls and key management procedures from the 2013 NXA control set. So those have been combined into a single control here, which is the use of cryptography. It says rules for the effective use of cryptography, including cryptographic key management, should be defined and implemented. Essentially, you want to make sure that you're defining your approach to cryptography, where it's used, what the minimum standards are within a policy, and specifically that you're focusing on procedures for managing keys throughout their life cycle. The implementation guidance on this is very useful. Uh, so go to 27002 and look at control 8.24. It actually has a list of life cycle stages for a key to exist in uh, listed out in a bulleted list. So sit down and read through that and make sure that all of the key types within your organization are being documented as how they should be handled at each of those life cycle stages. And if one of those stages does not apply, simply call that out. Also, make sure that you're doing this even if you have a cloud service such as AWS, KMS, or something like that that is managing keys on your behalf. You still need to show that you are aware of how that key is being managed at that various life cycle stage so that you can demonstrate that to an auditor and that you can demonstrate that you understand the ecosystem and the situation for using keys within your systems. Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series. If you'd like to learn more about updates to the framework, check out a link in the description below to a white paper we've written. Also, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content like this. Look for us on LinkedIn, and also check out our website at risk360.com to learn more about how Risk360 may be able to help you achieve your security and compliance goals.